Philadelphia right now is failing to graduate about 50% of its kids. The numbers that we're seeing in Philadelphia are far too high. If we have close to a 50% dropout rate, mm -hmm. then at a certain point, it's not like it's this small little problem over here. I mean, it's half the students that are in high schools. Um, so we have to look in a completely different way at the, how we do high school. Where people lose a sense of hope is where they cannot see a future. When young people are not finishing school, they're interrupting uh, their opportunities in life. And but for programs uh, like Fairhill, uh, a lot of these young people would have nowhere. Uh, to go. The dropout crisis in this city is a major epidemic mm -hmm. and it's about time that somebody has a, used their voice to say something and speak about it. Mm -hmm. And eventually if we, if we get enough people to come together and agree on, on this problem then something will be done. My name is Amanda Marie Soro. I go to Fairhill Community High School. I'm 16 years old, going on 17, July 26. 2007. Um, before I went to the school, I went to Kensington. I left for a couple months because I had a baby. And I came here to graduate faster and just to graduate. Hi, my name is Delano Rivera and I'm 18 years old. I'm originally from North Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the reason why I came to Fairhill is because I don't feel safe in my other school. There are several reasons why uh, students drop out of school. Uh, one might be a family issue or a family concern. Uh, another issue might be they're a teen parent and they don't have anyone to take care of their child. Uh, some students drop out because they're being picked on. Many youths leave not because they want to drop out but because they're pushed out of school. Uh, and there are lots of different reasons that teenagers find uh, going to school not the best thing for them. When I talk to young people about why they dropped out of school, it ranges, you mm -hmm. know, from things that are going on in their school to things that are going on at home to having problems with academics. Sometimes kids are afraid to go to school and drop out. They've been bullied or victimized. Uh, sometimes uh, they've been ignored when they've been out of school to the point where they feel that nobody cares about them. And then sometimes life gets in the way. I mean, there are life circumstances that happen that um, contribute to somebody, you know, leaving school. And, and then the question becomes, when you talk about um, why the dropout rate is as high, is okay. So if all of these things can happen and do happen, where are the responses or the solutions? First, we need to start at a much earlier age, uh, identifying, uh, and you can do this through studies and review of records and, and other uh, interventions. What we need to do is start looking at the uh, transcripts and, and uh, uh, records of 6th and 7th graders. You can tell in middle school, based on a whole series of indicators, whether or not a young person at that age, 11, 12, 13, whether they're going to graduate from high school. There's four indicators, and it's failing math, failing English, attending school less than 80% of the time, or if you get a bad behavior grade. If you have one of those four things, um, about 40% of those youth go on to drop out of out of school. Uh, we're clearly not capturing the, uh, the, the uh, attention uh, and the interest of a, lot, of a lot of young people in school. It's either boring to them or they're not getting uh, the kind of attention that they need. Our class sizes are still much too large. Our uh, assets and some of our facilities uh, are not up to the standard uh, that they should be. So you got kids coming into the system right now at five or six years old who aren't reading at home who don't maybe have a supportive family situation. You got third graders who've already transferred schools four times. Mm -hmm. So they're getting behind. I mean, so until we sort of stop under-preparing kids all the way through, um, we're going to continue to have a problem. When I talk to students, one of the things they say is once they start failing, nobody feels good about failing, right? And so then you start to feel bad about yourself. You lose some of your self-confidence. You're not sure how to make up from there, right? You lose your self-esteem. And then kids start acting out, not because necessarily they don't want to, you know, be coming to school, but they don't want to fail, and they don't know how to get help. And so it just becomes this snowball effect, and at some point I think people just give up. You know, we have young people for six or seven hours a day. 
what we don't know is what goes on on the other 18 hours uh, in the course of their life and then they come back ultimately they slip behind uh, in either reading or math uh, and then feel like they're not at the same level uh, with the other young people in school and eventually just drop out I mean I think the first thing is in large high schools it doesn't always get picked up right so students may be struggling they may be missing school and because the school's so big a lot of times what kids say is I left school nobody even called Right, I left school, I was absent, I stopped coming, nobody seemed to notice. They've been ignored when they've been out of school to the point where they feel nobody cares about them. And the other thing that we hear students say is there wasn't anybody at home or anybody at school, an adult, that I could connect with. So I didn't feel like I had anybody to talk to about what was going on. I didn't trust anybody in the school. They feel disconnected in large high schools, they feel lost. Um, you know, it's a huge school, yet they still feel alone. Uh, some young people need additional time and attention from their teachers, which is hard to get when you're at a 1 to 30 uh, student-teacher ratio. Uh, it's even that much more difficult when you have a counselor uh, to student uh, ratio of upwards of 500 to 1. You folks who are in school now have a edu an educational path that you can imagine. If you weren't in school, that path looks very short mm -hmm. to you and other pathways begin to open up and one of those pathways is a pathway of crime for some kids. Public responses to the dropout crisis uh, often lumps all kids into the same pot uh, as it were so that the solutions aren't individualized enough and every kid has a different life story and that life story needs to be addressed. I'm Raquel Carrasquillo. I'm attending Fairhill right now because I was a dropout at once and I don't know, I figured out that I wanted to go back to school and do good. So I'm at Fairhill now, I'm doing good. Um, I have one more year to go. I'm 17. I came here when I was 16. Before I came here, I was in Edison. I was fighting a lot, getting into trouble, cutting class. And now I'm here. And I do better, I get good grades, I'm trying to finish school. I appreciate that you're doing this documentary. I have uh, heard of the school and I'm aware of uh, the great work uh, that you're doing. Uh, dropout, uh, there is a dropout crisis yeah. uh, in Philadelphia. And uh, with 45% of our entering ninth graders not finishing high school, it really presents a real challenge uh, for the city of Philadelphia. So one, I want to say I'm very proud of the work that you're doing, that you're uh, in school uh, and trying to move on with your lives. When I used to work at PCCY, the director downstairs, Shelly Yanoff, she wrote an editorial in one of the notebook issues that dealt with the dropout crisis, the public school notebook. And in her editorial, she said, you know what, if we had um, a condition where, you know, four out of, out of ten kids, five out of ten kids were falling sick and ill and languishing in, in hospitals and displaying the same symptoms, and we, we, would, we would rush to find out what was going on. We would name it, we would define it, we would measure it, we would do an epidemiology to understand the roots and causes of it, and we would understand this as a public health issue, and we would find a way to, to, to address this and deal with it. Well, that's what the dropout crisis is. It's a public health issue. It really is. The transition from eighth to ninth grade isn't easy for a lot of students, and getting, coming out of your middle school and going into high school, um, the high schools lose a lot of students in that ninth grade year. And so we're talking about what can we do in the summer mm -hmm. and in the beginning of ninth grade to try to help students make a better transition to ninth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of our issues was we identified there's about 8,200 students a year that drop out of high school. And so what we wanted to say is if there legitimately are 8,200 students between the ages of, say, 14 and 19 that are dropping out every year, then we need to figure out how we have places for 8,200 additional students to go. It's not enough to say what the district's old response would be. Um, so if you dropped out a math bomb, 